So this is Deepak and I'm here on a course we are conducting called uh, Silent Awakenings. Here meaning in Asilomar in Monterey, California. You can see the beach behind me and if you look around in this area, you'll see lots of dunes and uh, trees and many other things going on. You can hear a silent bell right now as well. So as I was walking on this beach, I was looking at uh, the scenery behind me. You see these people walking, and you see the beach. And you say, what uh, did it look like a hundred years ago? And you can go back uh, perhaps then a uh, thousand years ago, or ten thousand years ago, or sixty-five million years ago, when dinosaurs roamed the same area probably. What will it look like uh, 10,000 years from now if we survive the ecological devastation we've caused and climate change? The point is, um, nothing seems to be permanent. People come and go. These dunes took a long time to uh, be who they are or what they are. They'll be gone. These trees, this beach, this location, the flora, the fauna, Everything is constantly in transition. And yet uh, we uh, complain about small things, worry about small things, hold on to small things, get uh, all melodramatic about small things. Who said what to whom? You know, the problem with our relationships and so on. So I was thinking of the great teachings of the Vedanta and uh, also Buddha on the causes of suffering, human suffering. And the first cause being uh, not knowing the true nature of reality, including our own. You know, who am I? Uh, can't be my body because it's constantly shifting. I don't have the same body I had last year or 10 years ago. Can't be my mind because my thoughts are flickering in and out of my awareness. I have so many personalities that have come and gone since I was born. My mind is a shifting, flickering of thoughts, emotions, feelings, desires, memories, and they keep changing. So who am I is the perennial question. Not knowing the answer to that is uh, what creates a lot of suffering. And that's called the first klesha, the first cause of suffering. The second is, uh, is clinging and holding on to that which is not real. What are you holding on to if, if everything is a process, if everything is continually moving, shifting, transforming, flickering? It's like holding on to the wind. So how can there be anything to hold on to? And who's holding on to? Because this that holds on to is also consciously, sorry, constantly changing, flickering, moving, transitioning. Nothing to hold on to and no one to do the holding on. And yet, you know, we're grasping all the time. Uh, the third uh, klesha, the cause of suffering, is afraid of this constant change, transformation. Uh, and the fourth is this constricted identity that I call Deepak or Deepak Chopra. Because uh, Deepak Chopra is a blink in the eye of eternity, <coughs> like a wisp of smoke lost in the air. And the final cause of uh, suffering is the fear of death. But the question is, who dies? So <laughs> it's kind of very interesting that ancient wisdom traditions had a clue that who you are, who I am, is nothing conceivable, imaginable, or graspable. It is, uh, it is uh, for lack of a better word, uh, formless being. Formless, dimensionless. No height, no width, no depth, no location in space or time. 
and yet it is the consciousness which remains unseen but without which there is no seeing. It remains unheard but without which there is no hearing. It remains untouched, tasted or smelt but without which there is no perceptual experience. Who you are is nothing conceivable or imaginable. And what you grasp at is nothing that you can hold on to. It's ungraspable. What you're afraid of is actually the fleeting, ungraspable, ephemeral, dreamlike uh, coming and going of form and phenomena that are generated in this un inconceivable, formless, uh, boundless reality. And what dies is what never was, what uh, never really existed because there's no such thing as a thing. There's only a process in the unimaginable, inconceivable, formless ground of being. And we are that. Thou art that. Tattvamasi. Aham Brahmasmi. Uh, the ground of being is the ground of the universe. Aham, I am the universe. But this universe, this whole spectacular expanse in space and time, is actually a, a wink in the eye of eternity. Just uh, like uh, a flame that flickered and is gone. You know, the Buddha once said, this lifetime of ours is transient as autumn clouds. To watch the birth and death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is uh, like a torrent down a steep mountain rushing by and then is gone. I think I once heard an American Indian chief say, um, what is this life? It's like uh, the cry of the uh, wolf in the middle of the night, like the flight of an eagle that uh, is there and is gone. Uh, a glittering of flashlight that uh, is like a firefly comes and goes. So, is there any solace in all of this? The solace in all of this is uh, that the only solution is to know yourself. To know yourself as the ground of existence, transcendent, timeless, eternal, unchanging, and the field of possibilities in which the entire universe arises and subsides, where time has no meaning, and space and location have no meaning and yet this is the formless being that you and I are and only in this formless um, inex inexplicable unimaginable, unimaginable inconceivable reality there is freedom when we let go of all concepts all ideas all images all thoughts all perceptions and we can settle into this formless being we know it as awareness we know it as existence and only in this there is freedom a lot of words to say something that could come to you if you just sat there and became still